Okay, thank you for uh, introduction, Stan. So, yes, uh, good morning. Maybe some area already. Good afternoon. My name is Jay Peck. I'm working at HEC, Hydrologic Engineering Center, as your post wildfire hydrology, uh, debris yield, and the sediment specialist. Okay, so uh, my portion is HHMS side today. Okay, I'm going to talk about debris yield analysis uh, using HHHMS uh, within two hours. Okay, let me start. Okay, this is the overview of my presentation today. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the simple goal about this presentation. And the next one is I want to talk about the global warming impact on wildfire. Okay. Now, many persons are concerned about global warming. And that is impact not just only wildfire, impact rainfall pattern, and then maybe air quality, water quality, maybe ecosystem. So we're going to talk about this one a little bit more. The next one is, what is the debris flow? I know as many people already know about the debris flow, but I want to show some of my previous project to understand the debris flow with a certain system that manage more hydraulic structure system, especially with the debris basin. Okay. Our next one, I'm going to show the some current existing five debris yield method inside the HEC HMS. So I'm going to go over one by one with detail as original formula. Okay. And then I have a three case study uh, with the HEC HMS. The first one uh, with a small basin. Okay, a small basin. Uh, I have some brand debris basin project where I'm going to do something in a presentation and then I will show you some demo. Second case study is large basin. The mean is we need some divided our sub basin because it's the original basin is too large. It's good. So that's why we need to divide it with the sub basin and then routing through the reach from the upstream to the downstream outlet. Okay. Normally that outlet location we have debris basin. This case I'm using Deer Creek debris basin. Last case study, post wildfire hydrology. Okay. I'm using Aerosaco watershed around the Southern California. So I'm kind of simulate about nine years simulation. I will show you that too. And then last one is a new HEC HMS feature, some uh, reservoir siltation feature. Okay. If we have some debris or sediment inflow into the reservoir, then a reservoir capacity is going to be reduced based on that deposition. Before, we don't have this dynamic reservoir reduction capacity. Now we have that. With this tool, we can generate the better kind of simulation, especially for debris yield. Uh, you know, uh, through the time, we know that some uh, debris basin capacity reduced through the some debris inflow into the debris basin. We can show that result uh, with this new feature. The last one is question and feedback time. As goal, it's pretty simple. We're trying to provide a quick, simple tool to predict debris yield based on the simple field data. Now, normally we can have some fire map uh, and then precipitation. And then based on that, we're using just the 10 meter DEMs, uh, digital elevation model. Then we can generate it some debris yield model with HHHMS. HMS. Uh, let me show you some example. You can see this graph here. Uh, we have a six debris basin. The so blue column is original design debris basin capacity. And the left column is gray color. This time is a measured debris volume. We measured after debris event. We, this is pretty good information, but normally we don't have this information you know, before debris event. But if we utilize this HHHMS debris yield tool, we can estimate the debris yield volume with some estimated kind of forecasting rainfall data then you can generate the, this information. Then it would be great information to develop the, your future plan with this kind of uh, information. The mean is you can see 
compare with your, uh, with your estimated debris yield and the original basin capacity. Among the these six, maybe you can see San Antonio number one debris basin is gonna be over top, okay? The meaning you need concern about the downstream of this debris basin because it's gonna be over top. And then four, maybe debris clean out you know, plan, maybe you need to know which debris basin we need to concern or we need to clean out the first. The main is maybe San Antonio, you wanna clean out because it's gonna be over top. Maybe next one is a San Canyon and the devil number three. Something like that, you can have some idea uh, to prepare the, your emergency evacuation plan or some debris basin cleanup plan. Uh, that's the simple goal for this presentation. Okay, now we need to talk uh, about the global warming impact, especially on wildfire. Okay, so I'm using some uh, recent uh, published paper. Based on that information, snowpack is melting one to the four week earlier than before is last 50 year information, okay? With that, we have a more peak, it's kind of high peak earlier. And then based on that, with the early snow melting, we have five times more wildfire than before, the mean is late snow melting situation, okay? With that, wildfire generate at almost 40% of a fossil fuel carbon emission, okay? With that huge carbon emission accelerated greenhouse gas emission effect and then accelerated climate changing effect, then early snow melting. This kind of cycle getting make worse and worse. Okay. This is kind of typical climate change impact to the wildfire. Okay, this is just only wildfire, but climate change impact to the rainfall pattern also too. So uh, that is make a double, you know, to uh, generate more debris flow. We'll see more in the next slide. Uh, this pie chart pre interesting uh, you know, information uh, to me here. Uh, this one is top 20 largest California wildfire, okay? But as you can see, this uh, black color here, gray, uh, gray and uh, black, almost the 60 year you know, period, we have only three events, okay? But since the 2000, and then we have almost 90% occurred after 20 year, uh, no, a year 2000, okay? The mean is more big fire occurred recent 20 year. Uh, here, 2003, I'm using 2003 fire information for my PhD dissertation. At the time, 2003 fire is the biggest kind of largest fire in California history. But now, not anymore. You can see huge fire. But last two years, 2020, 2021, is more than 50% among the deaths you know, largest fire in California history. That's a huge changing. It's kind of wildfire pattern is changing. So that's the one of founding uh, through the, our information in here. Okay, so now we want to talk about the, what is the debris flow, okay? I want to um, bring the, some uh, previous my project and then we can see some uh, kind of uh, example and the, some, you know, the debris yield uh, digester uh, through the this history then it'll be helpful to understand what is the debris flow. I just make a simple equation. While the fire plus a storm event equal debris disaster, okay? Let me verify that this equation uh, with this information. I'm using 2003 fire. Uh, we have uh, uh, October, November uh, in 2003, that we have uh, Grand Freaks and old fire around the San Bernardino County. As you know, 
uh, around the September and October in Southern California area, we have Santa Ana wind season. During the time, we have a huge strong wind. That's why we have a more brush fire. So in the a strong wind make us some bigger fire also too. And then after this fire, unfortunately, Southern California is a storm season just start after fire season. Okay, as you can see here in this uh, 2003, we have a first major fire in Christmas day, December 25th. That is around 0 0.88 inch per hour. That's the less than two year storm event. Uh, with this two event, fire and storm, we have big debris disaster. Okay? We have two cases. First case without debris basin case. So we have a small uh, town we call the Boy area as a, around the San Bernardino County. Uh, inside the Boy area, we have a main street they call Green of the Avenue. Uh, after this Christmas event, along the Sun Green of the Avenue, huge debris inundated through the, this community. I will show you that information more. Uh, because you know, so one of the region, uh, they don't have any debris basin upstream of their town because in history, they don't have any flood issue and then also they don't have any sediment and debris issue. That's why they don't need the debris uh, you know, dam uh, in, in this area. But they don't have some big fire before. That's the reason why they don't have this kind of disaster flood and debris yield. But now they have fire upstream of their uh, watershed. That's the changing everything. And then uh, with the debris basin, Southern California areas uh, more than 160 debris basin uh, along the foothill area to protect the downstream and you know, the community. So with this 2003 fire, 41 debris basin is filled by debris. So most of the debris basin designed just for one event. That's the reason why we need to clean up right away because to recover uh, debris basin capacity to protect next you know, following debris you know, inflow into this area. Okay. At the time, it's a California governor's called a state emergency. And then uh, federal government has uh, you know, uh, involved this project to helping out clean out the, this debris basin. At the time, I'm working at the Los Angeles district. Uh, that's why I have opportunity working for this project. Okay. With this situation, we need a certain good tool to estimate it, some debris yield to schedule clean out operation plan or rapid emergency response plan. Okay, that's the reason. Okay, so let me look at the fire first. In 2003, so we have a fire, almost 750,000 acre burn and the 3,500 home burn in, in this year. Okay. And then uh, this is kind of overall fire map around Southern California in the 2003. Uh, we have two main fire, big fire around the San Diego area, three fire around the San Bernardino County area, two fire around the Ventura and Santa Barbara County at the time. Let me zoom into that San, San Bernardino County area. Actually three fire occur separately but uh, eventually merge as one fire. Uh, the boy area around here is kind of a junction around the two, uh, 210 and then uh, 15 uh, area. Uh, and then this is NASA satellite image. You can see the huge smoke. This is one of the main you know, air quality issue uh, from the, this uh, main fire around this time. And then we need to look at the, some hydraulic structure around the, this fire area. Uh, this San Bernardino County, along the, this foothill, uh, normally we install the debris basin. Okay? And the downstream of this fire, uh, we have a uh, plateau dam. And the inside of this fire area, we have a San Antonio dam. And then uh, here, edge of this fire is a Seven Oaks dam. Okay, this is existing main uh, dam around this fire area. Uh, next, we need to look at 
precipitation. Okay. Uh, this pre the two precipitation uh, gauge we have around the Debor area. Our first one is the Debor Water Corporation gauge that is part of San Bernardino County Flood Control District gauge. As you can see in the Christmas day, we have two peak. Our first peak is occurs around the morning time, 7.15, 0 0.56 inch per hour. Second peak happened around the afternoon, 2.30, 0 0.88 inch per hour. Okay, we have another gauge, it's a core gauge, it's a San Bernardino fire station. We can see the high, uh, high air graph. It's a little bit less than this uh, Debora Water Corporation gauge because elevation difference. Uh, this one is a higher elevation than uh, this uh, Debora fire station. For analysis, uh, we have some mountain watershed. That's, that's why we're using this Debora Water Corporation gauge. Compared with NOAA Atlas 14 information, uh, in this area, two year frequency, one hour 60 minute, uh, or one hour rainfall intensity is 0 0.94. Our peak is 0 0.88 uh, around the second peak. That is less than two year uh, you know, storm event. Now, I wanna compare with the recent you know, uh, a fire uh, with uh, you know, Monticello Creek 2018, uh, Santa Barbara area. Then I wanna look at the, some Monticello Creek uh, you know, rain gauge, you know, it's the 325 ID number for this rain gauge. You can see here, one hour rainfall, Intensity 0 0.5, 0 0.95, five, five year you know, the event. 30 minute, 0 0.77, still five year. 50 minute, 0 0.73, 50 year. 10 minute, 0 0.69, 100 year. Five minutes, 200 year event. That's a huge, you know, changing compared with the previous old record in terms of rainfall. So with that, it's a kind of new trend and uh, based on the uh, global warming impact. Okay? So with this shorter duration rainfall, you know, it's the more extreme kind of uh, you know, event. Okay? And then you can see the extreme five minute, 10 minute and the 50 minute rainfall and it triggers a huge flush flood and the debris flow uh, from the disk. Uh, you know, 2018 Santa Barbara debris flow event. So when I developed uh, my uh, uh, Pekani, uh, you know, fire factor also uh, MSDPM method, at the time we using 1983, uh, 1938 through the uh, 2005. At the time, when I do the, some correlation between the five, uh, uh, five minute, 15 minute, uh, 10, 10, one hour, but the so correlation is the highest correlation is one hour uh, based on the, that old uh, you know, record. But the recent 20 year record, I think it's that this more short pre, uh, duration rainfall intensity has more correlation. Okay? Uh, that's the, what I found uh, through the, this information. Now I wanna go with, without debris basin case. Okay? First, this is a Debois area location uh, between the 210 highway and the 215 uh, highway, uh, go to uh, Las Vegas. This location is a Debois area. This Debois area is watershed here. It's, as you can see, it's 100% burn by the 2003 fire. Uh, this watershed only 180 acre, relief ratio 0 0.3. So, let me go back here. We can generate the debris yield from the HCHMS model with this uh, watershed information. Then we can provide it this uh, information uh, in terms of a sedi graph and sediment volume and uh, concentration graph to the HHRAS. HHRAS generated this kind of a polygon is a debris inundation map with non-Newtonian you know, it's a debris transfer method. Okay, at the time we didn't apply RAS because we don't have that information, uh, you know, tool. But this uh, this polygon is a measured debris inundation map based on the survey. Okay, you can see here this is a kind of boundary between the HMS and RAS. 
HTHMS generated some information, and the rest take that information as your upper boundary condition and generate it inundation map like this. Okay. So I want to indicate one location, 735 Greenwood Avenue. This is Mr. Davis' house. He took some video shot uh, around the, some first peak. It's the morning time. You can see some information. Okay, let me play this one. This is Mr. Uh, Davis' house. This is Greenwood Avenue. It looks like a river right now. That it was just the main street, Greenwood Avenue. Look at this, as a huge debris flow, you know, came from the upstream as a huge rock. Uh, look at this kind of a huge you know, rock. It's rolling through the you know, flow. Uh, this is a huge amount of debris. Even this is the first peak. As a second peak, as a Mr. Davis, he cannot take uh, you know, the, the shot uh, more because he need to escape. Is a huge debris you know, flow you know, around this time, around this area. Okay. So uh, I have some sound, but uh, you know, some region we cannot hear the, the sound. So you can uh, look at the just kind of uh, you know, it's a, uh, video here. Let me go back. After that event, is, uh, we went to site vision and then take uh, some survey and then take uh, some shot as a, po a photo uh, uh, around this area. Okay. Uh, this one is looking upstream is uh, to you uh, know picture the some burn watershed like that. This is existing some kind of a stream here. That location around this star. Uh, that is huge kind of erosion, but it was not exist before. That was occurred during the dead night, uh, during the dead morning, okay? Huge channel. That is around some outlet here. And then as a looking upstream, uh, uh, this is the first, uh, you know, the resident home around this location. Looking upstream, this is a light pole. Uh, this is uh, my coworker, Dr. Chie. So you can see the huge size of this channel, okay? That's the it's a main source, uh, you know, downstream, uh, you know, debris inundation, you know, source. That was uh, happened during the, that event around that location. Uh, same thing is looking downstream is the same light pole here. The first, uh, you know, home left hand side, and then uh, looking upstream, uh, this is the first home left hand side. The, Huge rock is my coworker Kerry Casey here, and then around that location, looks like a, you know it's the natural bottom channel bottom, but it's not. Uh, it was not the channel. It's, it's a street. Look at this. This is kind of I think it's the you know it's the uh, car around here. It's a little, you can see the tire. Uh, this jib is belong to this uh, right hand side the first uh, resident, but the uh, we found here rolling through, you know, uh, uh, with the debris up to here. Uh, stop sign, you can measure easily debris, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, depths here, uh, almost a four feet at least. That's the around the cross section area. This is one of a parking lot here. And then this is one of resident home, uh, 685 uh, Greenwood Avenue. Of that location. Another shot here. Okay, that was uh, you know the without debris basin, but with the debris basin, I have some uh, different set of picture. You can see some difference between the different time. Okay, a uh, first picture pre-fire condition. We have a fire 2003, it's almost three years before fire. You can see there's some habitat uh, status before fire. And then I have a, another set of a picture, post fire and pre-flood, okay? After fire, Grand Prix fire, but before flood. Then uh, third uh, set of picture is post fire and post flood. With the Christmas event with a nine, 0 0.95 inch per hour. 
And then the another set clean out condition. We clean out the, this uh, Deer Creek debris basin before next storm, okay? And then next major storm is almost 10 months later after Christmas event, we have 1.36 inch per hour. That's the 2004 October. Let me show you that that's the uh, picture. You can see some difference between the, the stage. This is the location, Deer Creek Debris Basin and Day Creek Debris Basin here. As you can see, right after Debris Basin, this is Rancho Cucamonga area, Highway 210, Highway 15, 100% developed here. Okay, so this two debris basin is one of the largest debris basin in, in, in around the Southern California. Okay, so this is pre-fire condition, uh, 2000 July. You can see pre heavy and dense and also a healthy habitat around this watershed. You can see this is a Deer Creek spillway looking downstream and the two water tank here, you're gonna see more of this two water tank as your indicator in the following picture. So this one is, you can measure the this tree height to compare with this hiker. Now, many people thinking Southern California is a semi-arid area, maybe it's kind of more dry, but it looks like a jungle here. It's a huge tree, it's pretty dense and healthy tree around here. Uh, this is a, uh, one of the uh, reef raft structure uh, uh, around the watershed to capture debris you know, the, behind this uh, structure. Uh, this one is a second set, post-fire and pre-flood. You can see it's reef raft structure again, and then spare the soil. It's a 100% bond, two water tank. Look at this watershed. It's a totally changed between the before. Here, no tree anymore. It's kind of a totally 100% bare soil here. The, this is looking upstream from the debris basin. You can see debris basin intake tower and the two water tank and then the watershed. This is the main uh, flow, flow way here, 100% burn. And then you can compare with you know, after debris, how much debris fill. This is kind of a main debris basin is a kind of storage area here. This is post flood, where you know, after Christmas event, rip wrap structure is filled by you know the, behind the rip wrap capacity you know storage is filled by debris, huge rock here and then gravel and the boulder. Uh, this one is intact tower. It's filled up to this elevation. This elevation pretty much same elevation with uh, spillway elevation to intact tower here. It's a fine material deposit around the inside the uh, basin area, and then more coarse material deposit from the upstream. Look at this, it's a looking downstream spillway. You can see the huge boulder, it's a deposit more upstream area. Okay, now it is another set, clean out condition. Uh, this picture is good. This uh, elevation is, uh, you know, it's a debris yield is up to spillway. That means some fine material you know, the overtop through the this spillway. Look at this huge, you know, heavy equipment to, to take it out the debris from the this basin, uh, because we need to clean out, you know, before next storm. Okay, almost done. And then I did some kind of a, uh, inspection after they did. This is my uh, branch chief, H N H branch chief around that time, Joe Evelyn, here. So that is clean out 100%. Then this one is after 10 months is kind of a 2004 new storm season with 1.36 inch per hour. It's filled uh, by water and some sediment, but the even bigger uh, storm event, but in terms of debris yield amount is less than before uh, because it's, uh, we already kind of uh, you know, uh, just use some main uh, debris source after burn with that first storm. Second storm, even more energy, uh, but we have limited sediment or debris source. That's why we have less debris yield around this area. You can see there's some gravel mining area. They're using uh, you know, this equipment to get some uh, 
uh, material, but they don't have time to escape. That's why they, you know, they're buried by this uh, second flow. Okay, this is looking upstream to water tank intake tower. Okay, that's the some uh, you know information from the my previous project. I hope you gonna be have a better idea to understand the debris flow with a certain debris, you know, the basin structure. Okay. And the next one, I wanna show the some debris yield method in HECHMS. We have right now five methods. Uh, then I wanna go over more detail with uh, each equation and the user interface. Okay, actually we have a five method, but we can say the two set of method, two set of option. The first option, for emergency response option, because we're gonna use the just rainfall information, okay? This four method, LAJ3 equation one, MSDPM, multi-sequence debris prediction method, USGS emergency assessment, and USGS long-term method, they using only rainfall intensity, okay? They don't need some, you know, the, Post wide fire hydrology is kind of run off a model. Okay. Second option is a more detailed option. Maybe we can utilize maybe the giant purpose, but you need watershed runoff information under the burn condition. That's going to be used LA district debris equation two through five. Let's go over one by one. Okay. Before that, I want to show the some HHMS, the sediment low process, okay? We have a main element inside the HHHMS, watershed we call sub-basin element and channel element and reservoir element. Inside the watershed element, we have two sediment, that's the regular sediment method for uh, in natural watershed, we have muscle, modified universal soil loss equation option, for urban watershed, we have a built up wash up option. Now we add five options for debris yield. Okay. Uh, one is LA District Equation 1 and LA District Equation 2 through 5. And the multi sequence deep, uh, debris prediction method, USGS long term, USGS short term method. We have a five option. This red color is already developed. You can find this method in our release version, but blue color is a still developing version, okay? Inside channel element, we have a seven transfer function method for non-cohesive material, and then we have a clone and partner method for cohesive material. But that is a regular sediment uh, and a tra transfer method, not for debris like a hyper-concentrated method. Uh, when I testing this one with the debris yield and hyperconcentrated flow case, we found existing transport capacity method cannot generate enough transport capacity for debris yield situation. Uh, that's why we put the some one simple debris yield uh, debris transfer method inside the this rich element. We called Muskingum and the sediment delivery ratio concept. Okay. I'm gonna explain a little bit more in the later about the, this one. A still developing stage here. Inside the reservoir element, we have a full velocity. Uh, that's the regular sediment full velocity, but we add hinder the sediment velocity for debris you know, yield case. So I think if we apply that this one is better than this full velocity for uh, you know, the, some uh, sediment a uh, trap exchange method also too. The last one is a dynamic reservoir siltation method. I mentioned uh, in the, our uh, uh, previous slide, this is a new tool. We're gonna generate it dynamic, I mean is a real time reservoir reduction, uh, you know, the information every time step, okay? I'm gonna explain more this one uh, with uh, more slide. Okay, LA equation one. LA equation one uh, developed uh, based on the 1980, 1938 through the 1983 data set 
uh, collected from the uh, debris basin along the, uh, around the Southern California area. Most of the debris basin upstream watershed at uh, 0.1 scale mile to the three scale mile. Okay, uh, that's just something in you know, the data, uh, you know, the limitation here. Okay, uh, based on that data set, they generate the multi uh, regression equation with four independent variable. Okay, precipitation, they're using one hour precipitation uh, information. RL is relief ratio. Relief ratio, they're using kind of a elevation difference divided by longest, longest flow path. That's the uh, relief ratio. Area is your upstream watershed area. And the fire factor, that is uh, kind of fire factor through the time. I will show you the, some curve uh, from the LA District Debris Method Manual. Okay. With that, we can generate the debris yield. Okay. So, uh, based on the, this manual, uh, they had they did at the time they did some uh, uh, something correlation uh, study with the different precipitation information, maybe five minutes, fifty minutes, thirty minutes, something like that. But based on the uh, 1938 to the 1983, at the time one hour precipitation is a higher correlation with the debris yield. That's why they choose the one hour. But I'm sure if we use the, some more recent data, I think we have a more correlation, maybe 50 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay? That's why US uh, GS, the short term, they're using 50 minutes uh, you know, the intensity instead of one hour. I like that portion. Okay? With that, we have a uh, user interface. Okay, let me explain one by one. Uh, for the user interface, AT factor, adjustment transposition factor. A uh, reason why we put that, uh, this information is collected from the Los Angeles, Southern California area. If we want to apply outside of Southern California, we can adjust this one as a calibration factor. Maybe some area is generated more debris than Los Angeles, uh, Southern California area, then you can increase 1.1, 1.2. Some area is less yield compared with the Southern California, then you can generate use the 0 0.9, 0 0.8, okay? That's the purpose for this AT factor. Relief ratio, I already uh, you know, described that here. The fire factor, we can choose the fire factor uh, from the uh, curve, uh, you know, from H uh, LA District Equation Manual, uh, you know, one of a graph here, okay? I will show you like next slide. The flow rate threshold, this is kind of new. I put that one for continuous simulation because this original equation is developed just based on the event model. But I want to use this one uh, for uh, continuous simulation. I'm going to explain more with another slide here. Exponent, just this kind of a generate steady graph shape based on the flow hydrograph shape. We're using this number, then we can make uh, some flat one, we can make a, some in you know, a sharp shape compared with the uh, you know the H uh, flow hydrograph. Okay? Um, last one is a gradation curve. Uh, this equation just to generate the total rump um, uh, uh, amount at the outlet. With this gradation curve, normally you can take some sample around some basin area, and then you generated this gradation curve for uh, each grain size. Then we can distribute the total rump debris yield by grain size based on the disk gradation curve. That's the purpose. Okay, this is original kind of a bio factor curve from the Los Angeles, Los Angeles district manual. For example, this uh, uh, horizontal line is years since 100% wildfire. Vertical line is a fire factor. Your case is maybe three years after burn, then you can go three year and then back to line and then five. Your fire factor is five. The meaning is within one year, your fire factor, biggest one, 6.5. But uh, uh, more than 10 year, it's going to be three. Okay, that's the curve. Now I want to explain about the flow rate threshold value. I mentioned this is developed for continuous simulation. Uh, let's uh, see the, the, some example. 
Okay, if we choose 1.5 CFS, this is about the seven day uh, you know, flow. This is a direct runoff flow. It's not the total flow. We just eliminated infiltration loss and then generate the direct flow. We use that. If you use the 1.5, the with this line bigger than this threshold value, new rainfall event start, and then less than is a finish, and then another bigger than that a new rainfall, and then uh, finish the this one. With that one event, two event, three event, and then four event. So. In this case, using 1.5, we're gonna use the, this four event to generate the DB yield. But if you wanna use the 50, this case, as uh, so the first one is bigger than that, this is small one is your first event, second event, third event, fourth event, fifth event, sixth C event. Oh, uh, with this 50 CFS, then you're gonna have six storm event instead of four event. Using this one, you can calibrate it, your debris yield for the long term simulation. Okay, uh, that's the one is a kind of the purpose for this value. Next one is exponent. Okay, uh, blue color, blue line is original hydrograph, uh, hydrograph, flow hydrograph. But using this number, for example, zero mean is a kind of flat. But as a, uh, if you use one, it's uh, light blue. Uh, if you want a two, it's kind of a purple, it's a squeeze. Uh, if you increase your number of exponent, it's gonna be kind of a sharp. So normally I just wanna use the kind of one between the one and two, maybe 1.5. Uh, that's the kind of normal uh, in the recommendation for this value. Okay, next one is MSDPM, multi-sequence degree prediction model. That is a part of my PhD dissertation. At the time, I'm kind of generated this degree yield equation for continuous simulation, it's a long-term simulation, because around that time, we don't have a long-term degree simulation method, just only short-term event model, okay? To apply the long-term, I put some two trigger system, okay? I cannot use all, every single event because sometimes too much. So I wanna define certain event, storm event, which has enough energy generated debris yield, okay? Two trigger system. Our first trigger system based on the rainfall intensity. I bring the this first trigger in terms of rainfall intensity to generate this kind of entrained particle. Our second trigger system is a total rainfall amount. Okay. Even after entrained the particle, we need to move that particle's debris up to outlet area. That means we, not, we have enough rainfall amount to transport to the outlet. That's the two trigger system. Uh, but it's pretty much the same. I'm using rainfall intensity. It's a one hour rainfall intensity. And then relief ratio, area, and fire factor. But I generate the fire factor equation in here, not the graph anymore. Uh, this is a function of burn percentage and then burn year after uh, the fire date. And then last one is AP, is antistant effective precipitation event. Uh, because IA event, or, you know, so fire factor is gonna be re reduced. The mean is infiltration is a recover. So through the event, through the time, fire factor is gonna be recovered. Not just based on time, time and event. That's the function of this fire factor. So based on that, maybe we need some information. This is I generated based on the data around that time, okay? Uh, first graph is to generate first trigger system for threshold maximum one hour rainfall intensity. I generated this one based on the relief ratio, okay? Steep relief ratio, you don't need a higher intensity. Maybe it's a kind of a small intensity, but the flat area to entrain, you need a more higher kind of a rainfall intensity, okay? Based on relief ratio, you can find this first trigger based on this graph, 
that is just the initial value. Eventually, you need to calibrate this value with the measured data. Second graph to find out the, the second trigger based on the this first trigger value. One hour rainfall intensity, then you can find the total minimum rainfall intensity, P sub C, second trigger system. That is basic information description of this multi sequence debris yield method. Okay, next one is USGS method. USGS method, the long term and short term. A long term method is a no time limit. Okay, we can utilize this kind of forever based on that description. Okay, they're using uh, different uh, independent variable. So, uh, one hour rainfall intensity, 60 minutes is the same. A BT is a total area watershed burn, it's not burn percentage, burn area. T is a time since the recent fire. And then area A, R is relief. That is just, you know, elevation difference between the highest point to the lowest point. Uh, that's the main input parameter here. Okay, this is a user interface relief, date, burn area, and then the three of them is a common uh, you know, factor, uh, like a previous method. And the USGS long-term, I like this method because they're using 15-minute rainfall intensity. That is more work with the recent fire, I think. Okay, 15-minute uh, intensity, rainfall intensity, uh, instead of a 60-minute, and then BMH, mean is watershed area burn at moderate and high severity only. Uh, they exclude the uh, minor kind of severity uh, you know, area. So, and the all age relief ratio, same thing. This is user interface for emergency assessment, USGS relief, burn area, and then uh, main, uh, you know, the typical factor here. It's the last method, okay? Last method here uh, we call LA district equation two to the five. We have four equation, but four equation only difference. We're gonna use the different area. This equation two, three scale mile to the four, uh, 10 scale mile. Okay? They using relief ratio area fire factor is the same, but they using unit peak runoff. That's the more expensive data. Without calibration, uh, post fire fire hydrology model under the burn condition, it's the harder to find out that this Q. That's why I think it's expensive. Then we can generate the maybe better uh, debris yield with this kind of more detailed information. Okay, uh, this one is user interface, 80 factor relief ratio, user specified fire factor. If they choose, then you can find this value from the graph. And then if you have a pack any fire factor, then it's a pack any fire factor automatically calculate uh, this fire factor based on the, your burn date and burn percentage. You can have two options in terms of a fire factor method for LA debris equation two. Uh, three is a different, uh, you know, multi-regression equation. The independent value is same, but it's a different constant value for 10 to 25 scale mile. Uh, four is a 25 to 50 scale mile. Last one is up to 50 to the up to 200 scale mile. But inside the HCCH method, you don't need to worry about the, this selection of this method based on your area. Uh, HCCH method detect your sub-basin area and automatically capture the proper equation based on that information. Okay, uh, this one is uh, just the user interface. You can find sub-basin tab and then go to erosion method, and then you can choose one of this debris yield method. Each debris yield, five of them, you can find initial kind of uh, input parameter for each di different method. Now with that, HHHMS make a run and then generate this typical sediment output information. It's a steady graph, it's a sediment load through the time, uh, this case, and then this one is a sediment concentration through the time. Uh, that's gonna be main you know, uh, data resource for downstream HHRAS model as your upstream boundary condition. Okay, and uh, this one is uh, application 
uh, first case study with a small basin, okay, less than three square mile, uh, with the branded debris basin uh, project. Okay, I'm gonna show demo, but uh, maybe after this slide, before demo, I'm gonna take some short break. Okay, this one is a 2002 mountain fire around the Grandale area, Los Angeles County. Uh, this blue one uh, is a red one, red color is a fire map. Under the, this fire area, we have two sub basin. Our upstream one, is, the upper one is uh, Child Canyon, and then uh, the next one is uh, Brand Canyon. After this, we have two debris basin, Child debris basin and Brand debris basin. I'm gonna use this Brand debris basin case at this time, at this moment now. Okay, this one is initial result uh, with this four method uh, without debris basin. Okay, I want to just simple run without calibration because we don't have data. After something you know initial, I just make a run, uh, and you need to just area of your upstream watershed area for different four method, and then AT factor is just required for LA district and MSDPM method. Relief ratio, and then relief, I know different number for different method because USGS just elevation difference here. And the fire factor, uh, LA district and MSDPM, at the time we just choose the Peccany fire factor. Uh, the Peccany fire factor required the burn date and burn percentage. And then USGS short term, just the burn area. USGS long term, we need the fire date and the burn area. And then for calibration purpose for our flow rate threshold for long-term simulation, at the time I didn't put any effort. I just put the, some initial value, as your initial value is the lowest value, 0 0.001. That means that we're gonna capture the all event, okay? And then uh, MSDPM, we have two additional uh, input parameter uh, here. I just using uh, regression graph. That's the initial value. I didn't put any uh, uh, calibration effort at the time. With that, just initial value we, using this uh, simple data, this is the difference with the major data. Uh, LA district about 29% uh, underestimated, MSDPM 28% underestimated, USGS emergency assessment is a 40%, 41% overestimate, long term 123% overestimated. Still not bad. So maybe as you adjust the initial, I want to adjust to you maybe average value for this for method. Uh, that's uh, just for our kind of uh, future evacuation plan or some emergency asset, emergency the hazardous uh, you know plan something like that. This is the initial value. Now I do some little bit more calibration effort uh, with the major data. The major calibration or input parameter or with uh, this long-term simulation, I need to just this change of flow rate for LA district and the USGS short-term and long-term. And then we can improve this much. Then MSDPM, we have a more two trigger system as your input, par as your calibration parameter, then we have final difference with the major data. 5%, minus 4%, 2%, 1%, it's pretty good. Uh, just the changing this value uh, with uh, some uh, extra uh, calibration effort. Okay, now a little bit more detail. Now I want to put some downstream debris basin. Okay, uh, this is a terrain information. Uh, this is a Grand Canyon boundary watershed, and then red one is a, a burn area. Then you, if you look at the some downstream uh, around the outlet area, you can see I just zoom in here, detention uh, debris uh, basin here, uh, brand debris basin. You can see basin and then some spillway, a spillway outlet here. Okay, with that information, I need a generated elevation area and elevation storage curve for reservoir element, okay? I have some data set. This top line is 20 plus percent uh, capacity contour. Black is 100 percent capacity contour. 
I'm using this contour and uh, 10 meter DEM. I just generated this two graph, elevation area, elevation storage curve, uh, you know, with this uh, given data set. This is not accurate, but I think that's enough for this stage. Uh, with that, I just make a run. Okay, uh, this is a typical output uh, from the reservoir element or for each different method. Uh, this one is LA equation one, and then MSDPM, USGS short-term method, USGS long-term method. Uh, first graph is area through the time, uh, reservoir area changing. And then light blue is reservoir elevation, and then red one is reservoir storage changing through the time. And then this one is a flow hydrograph. And then this one is sediment load. It means it accumulates sediment deposition at the reservoir bottom. Okay. So you can see each mass is a little bit different. So that is right, uh, you know, this red arrow I'm using uh, you know, calibration factor and at your initial uh, you know, threshold uh, uh, flow rate here. Uh, this one is 4.8. That's why they just using this one and this event. They cannot capture the, this event. Okay. And then MSDPM is a one CMS flow rate that they captured this much. But they have another trigger system, two additional trigger system in terms of rainfall intensity, in, te in terms of uh, total rainfall amount. Then they have a more trigger and then they capture one, maybe two, three, four. Uh, this is short term, 1.75, and then they capture one, two, maybe three, four, five, six, seven, eight, more rainfall capture. Uh, this is long term with 4.5, just two, three event capture here. So uh, I will show you the, some uh, slide, but uh, we have some actual event here. That's why I like two uh, the method compared with the other two. I think this one is uh, US just a short term is best uh, for this case. Okay. Uh, this one is a simulation result uh, therefore in terms of a dynamic uh, reservoir reduction uh, feature. Uh, this one, the uh, first one is a left hand side the two graph from the MSDPM. Uh, right hand two graph is US just short term method. This uh, right, uh, red arrow is a spillway elevation, okay? Uh, first one is elevation area. Uh, this elevation area, blue line is initial elevation area curve. Through the time, this yellow one is a final one. Then they drew, they uh, you know, lost some capacity from the almost eight foot. I mean, the, uh, you know, from the 2060 to the 2070, eight foot is deposited by the field, by the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the debris, okay? You can see each time step changing your elevation area and elevation storage curve uh, with this new feature, okay? Uh, same information for USGS short term. I think this is great information to prepare the debris basin clean out schedule plan, also downstream kind of uh, emergency evacuation plan based on the remaining capacity with through the time. Okay. This is kind of a summary. Uh, you can see this is uh, came from the, my previous paper. You can see the red dot is actual debris clean out measurement. Okay. The minute they clean out here around the December because they have December event after fire. That's why we needed this event. So only two methods after this calibration, uh, they capture this December event. So that's the, what I want to show you. Uh, this is the output from the HHHMS. Uh, you can see each grain size, you, uh, uh, HMS generated. This is a steady graph by the tone. This is concentration through the time for each grain size. That's gonna be used for HHRS input parameter. Okay, I think I have a short demo. I wanna, this is HHHMS model. Maybe some people familiar about HMS model, maybe some people not. Let me briefly explain. 
HHHMS has main three components uh, to make it run. Uh, first one is base model, second one is media knowledge model, third one is control specification. Uh, inside the base model, you can make uh, some basin. Uh, you can use this uh, seven element, um, like a Lego. You can build your watershed model as a watershed, and then if you have some reservoir, if you have some reach, and then you need to put the reach element, and then this is the main seven elements, sub-basin, reach, reservoir, and the junction, diversion, source, and sink. With this seven element, you can build your watershed model. In uh, this case, I have just one sub-basin and one reservoir, or this one is especially debris basin. Okay? Inside the watershed, you need to put some information, especially loss method, transport method, the base flow method, erosion method. This time erosion method, then you can, I choose the equation, LA equation one. You can choose the, the other one here. And then go to erosion tab. You, you can see user interface, AT factor, relief ratio, packing factor, and then you need to put date, percent, something like that. Okay? You can build, you know, build each your model with a different option here, okay? The media knowledge model here, that's the kind of input parameter, so the rainfall or snow here. I'm using here <clears throat> rain gauge here. So this is a rain gauge. I choose the each basin and then rain gauge. A rain gauge is a time series. To control the time series, you need to go to this time series data folder and then precipitation gauge, and then you can put, you can see the some child canyon gauge one, okay? At the time, I'm just using input manually, and then table, I put the manual input and then graph. Now this is rainfall through the whole time, okay? This is media logic model. Last one is a control specification. Control specification is controlled your run specification. Uh, with start time, start date, then the ending date and ending time. And then the finally is a time interval, five minutes. I'm just using small times because it's small sub basin. Okay. And the paired data, in this case, I'm using elevation area, elevation storage curve for reservoir element. If you click the reservoir element, then you need to put the, some elevation storage elevation area curve. That is came from here. You need to generate here, for example, elevation storage curve that you need to build table and graph, okay? And then diameter percentage curve is a kind of a, your uh, uh, gradation curve, Child Canyon, Debris Canyon uh, uh, information in here, okay? And then compute tab, you just choose your three main component, just for LA equation one, then you need to choose the basin model, LA equation one. Then you need to choose the meteorology model, uh, 2002 event. And then you need to choose control specification, okay? With that, you can make it run. Uh, first, the progress bar for flow. And then you're gonna have a second progress bar for sediment. Okay, after that, you can go to the result tab and then go to simulation one, maybe LA equation one. You have a summary table. Then also, if you go to basin, sub basin, and then this one is a flow output, and then you have a separate folder for sediment. That is a sediment generation from the this watershed by grain size, silt, sand, gravel, and sediment concentration, okay? And if you go to debris basin, and then this is a flow information, and then you have a sediment tab here. Sediment combined, that means is inflow from the, your upper watershed. That's the combined information. And then sediment load is from the, your sediment uh, outlet, is a reservoir spillway outlet. That's the sediment out. And the bottom sediment is accumulate sediment in your uh, detention and a reservoir uh, debris basin. You can see here, okay, by grain size. And then suspended information in here. This because sand and gravel is not suspended, everything in the deposit, that's why we only have a silt. 
this case, I don't have a clay, just a silt sand gravel option here. Okay, uh, this is uh, kind of typical. If you want to see more detailed information, let me go to each run for uh, this simulation. They generated separate DSS output. If you go to DSS output here, And then sediment elevation area curve. It can click everyone, everything, and then showing graph. And then you can see detail elevation area curve through the time dynamic simulation result. Okay, uh, you can see a bunch of different output from here. So you can find the more detailed information from the, this DSS output. <clears throat> this is a simple. A demo for this. So let me go back to my slide here. Okay. Hey, so now I want to show that some cases started with large basin, okay, with the Deer Creek uh, uh, debris basin. Let me go back here. I think we already saw the some different set of a picture uh, by different uh, you know period pre fire pre post fire pre flood everything, but now I want to generate the debris yield with HGHMS with this data set. Okay? Uh, this is kind of a result graph. Uh, we have Grand Freak fire here, and then the, this blue line is steady uh, graph. How much debris yield generate through the time, and then this is accumulated at the uh, reservoir detention uh, debris basin. The red dot here is a measured one. It's a pretty well match uh, based on the accumulate. First event, second event, third event is uh, main event Christmas Day, and the fourth event and compare with the major data. <clears throat> For this, uh, uh, Deer Creek about the 3.73 square mile. Uh, LA equation uh, uh, and uh, uh, MSDPM is up to three square mile. I need to divide it one or two because it's a 3.7 is pretty close to three. But the uh, testing purpose, I divided more. Okay, uh, this time 11 sub basin, nine reach, and six junction. You can see each sub basin. Uh, you know, so slope, uh, you know, so, and then area here. I'm using a mountain body rain gauge information. Simulation period about some four months here, and then time step one minute because it's pretty small, tiny sub basin. Okay. Uh, I have an issue because which element? We have some transport capacity method inside the reach element that is just a regular sediment, uh, but for this uh, debris flow, it's not, uh, you know, quite uh, meet this demand uh, with the existing method. Okay? Let me show you that result. I'm using uh, LA equation one MSDPM USGS long term. Around that time, I don't have it, the choice LA USGS short term because it was not developed at the time. So just a three method using existing transport capacity method, England Hansen, Lawson Copeland, and Yang's method. That is a, exactly the same engine with H Shras. And then full velocity Rubio, and then routing method, and the uniform uh, equilibrium and packing fire factor. Here is the issue. Normally bad depths, bad widths, we trying to use the, some actual, you know, the, some irritable bad depths and bad widths. But this time, I just to put the minimum value to limit that source from the reach. Okay, I just put a small amount of width, time interval one, and then a flow ratio. Uh, this is kind of a conceptual thing at this moment. Before we have hydrograph, that is water volume, and then top of that we have a steady graph. But normally we just ignore the, some sediment volume. Of, for regular sediment transport. But this time is debris flow. The meaning is huge volume uh, in, in the sediment side. That's why 
we want to put the some option uh, at some flow volume plus sediment debris volume. So at this time, I just increase 11% as your sediment volume. Okay, this is a kind of a developing stage. We trying to develop this one uh, for the next uh, uh, research topic. So, and then uh, I put the some IC and PC2 trigger system for only MSDPN. Uh, this is a simulated result and then compare with measured result. We have a 7% LA equation, one and 2% MSDPM, maybe 23 and 13% for LA USGS long term. This is still not bad after calibration, but still we have a concern for this. Uh, that's why we developed simple debris yield, debris transport, address, debris transport, debris yield transport capacity method uh, based on the Miss Kingdom and the sediment delivery, delivery ratio concept, okay? Uh, this is a typical Miss Kingdom. Miss Kingdom control translation is a leg and the attenuation, but they, not, they cannot control the volume. But now we put the, some sediment delivery ratio constant inside this Miss Kingdom equation then we can control the volume. Again, okay, delivery ratio is bigger than one, and then we can increase the minute some of erosion from the reach channel, then we have a more sediment outflow. But if we have some deposit case, then we can reduce to this one. That's the simple concept based on the uh, you know, typical hydrology routing. So we'll see uh, with this. Okay, last case study with the post, post wildfire hydrology. Okay. I'm using Iorosecco watershed around the Southern California area. I ran nine air simulation. Okay, so let me show here. Uh, we have two options uh, for hydrology, uh, post wildfire hydrology model. First one is a more empirical approach using curve number method. Second approach, more physically based, uh, using infiltration rate, uh, Smith power range or Kahneman wave and small, uh, you know, soil moisture counting method, something like that. First one, uh, using curve number. I have a good reference prepared by USDA. I think it's, uh, many people are familiar about that. They generated pretty good information in terms of curve number method. Okay. They divided the 10 region, the whole U.S. continental, and then they provide the cover number uh, by different cover type and the different soil group and the different post wildfire condition. Okay, and then you can choose you know, each cover number based on the your situation with this data set. Then uh, they provide a good guideline for cover number each different situation. You know, post wildfire, higher burn severity with hydrophobic soil, without hydrophobic soil, something like that. Now, this is good information to generate hydro, uh, post, fight, fi, post wildfire hydrology model with covenant method. I'm not going to spend that much time for this. Okay, this one is using more physically based using actual infiltration loss method. <clears throat> At this time, I compare with the two model. Our first one is Kinalos 2 model and then HCHMS model uh, for Iorosecco watershed. Kinalos 2 model developed by DRI, Dr. Lee Chen, and then I developed HCHMS using same data set. Okay? So left-hand side, this is a pre-fire, right-hand side the result is a post-fire. Okay, first graph, that is came from the Kinalus 2 as a calibration pre-fire condition. You can see it's a, like a, some uh, green color is a low peak that is measured one. And then thick gray color is a simulation one. Kinalus 2, they cannot simulate this situation because as you can see, this flow is a pretty small flow. It's like a more uh, base flow oriented here. Kinalos 2, they don't have a base flow function, but HMS has a base flow function, then we can simulate better like this for this small event. 
Okay. Uh, this one is CMS, this is CFS, but it's the same thing, but it's a little bit different scale with a different unit. Then I choose the, some bigger event and they calibrate it. And then this one is HCHMS model. Now we need to move to post wildfire. Uh, first graph from the Kinellus 2. Uh, this one is a hydrograph rainfall information. Uh, bottom one is a hydrograph. Uh, red one is a simulation one. And then uh, blue one is a observed one. It's a pretty good. Uh, uh, this one is a, you know, um, Simulation is not catch this one, but it's the first one and the last event is pretty good. A bottom graph from the HHHMS. I concentrated this one for calibration for first event, but the second, third, fourth event is not good. It's a kind of overestimated some region. Okay? That's the result uh, between the two separate uh, model. Okay, now, I want to simulate more long-term simulation. It's a uh, nine year almost uh, with the soil moisture counting monthly average ET method. Uh, this first storm season, first year, I calibrated uh, with the uh, you know the soil moisture counting method here. Then pretty good. Uh, black dot is measured one, and then uh, green one is simulation one, simulated one. But second year, simulation is overestimate because we're using same hydraulic conductivity is kind of low, uh, you know, the infiltration loss rate. So that is work for second year, uh, first year, second year overestimate, third and fourth year pre dry year, but fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, everything is overestimate because hydraulic conductivity is a recurver uh, after fire maybe up to normal condition. That means infiltration is increased. But if we use the fixed value after fire, then it's going to be overestimate, uh, overestimated for less of a year. Okay? That's the, what I found. And then uh, this is a Dr. Ebel uh, 2020 uh, uh, paper. So fire, this is measured hydraulic conductivity as a first year second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth year, it's gonna be increased, maybe it's flat, that means almost unburned condition. We need this situation as a dynamic, kind of as a dynamic hydraulic conductivity to recover from the afterburn to the normal, okay? To do that, I got some idea. This is my fire factor equation. I just using this information function of a burn percentage and the burn year after fire and then uh, uh, and this, uh, kind of pre-event number. Yeah, through the event, through the time, uh, this initial hydraulic conductivity is a recurve. And then I compare with uh, Dr. Evil kind of data, and then using this red line generated from the, this equation, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar trend. We can utilize that. So I just put the, this function uh, between the soil to the, uh, you know, surface storage to the soil storage. Okay, this is a typical our uh, schematic drawing for deficit and constant loss method. If you have rain and the canopy evaporated and the overflow to the surface storage, and then from the surface uh, storage it overflow to the direct runoff, and then going to be infiltrated. Before infiltration to the soil, I just make uh, some simple layer. Uh, with this equation and then control uh, through the fire effect with this equation. And then I just a uh, quick test with this equation. Uh, this time is the first year, second year, third year. <clears throat> the first year, uh, you can see measured and the green one is a simulated one. And then the second year, green one is a fixed value from the first year. But I generated the second year using this equation, but I didn't generate this value through the old event. I just using one value for second year, and we use the same value for second year, the same value for third year. Now this is a little bit simplified, it, but it is kind of uh, using this concept into here. But it's better because here, yellow one is from the this 
pack any dynamic hydraulic conductivity equation. Green one is a fixed one. Uh, this is still overestimate, but this one is pretty good with a compare with the uh, measure data. And 30 year, pretty good with the measure data, but still kind of fixed value is a pretty overestimate. At least we can find with this approach, the better than just one fixed value. Okay, that's the what we found. Just for your information, we uh, already contract out the, this feature that we're going to have that around the June and then I'm going to test and then the, prepare the, some interface. Maybe we can release the, maybe end of this year or early next year. That's the plan. Okay, last one is new feature for reservoir capacity reduction feature. Okay, let me explain a little bit more. Before sediment trap efficiency, we using chance trap efficiency method. Chance trap efficiency method based on the critical velocity. Critical velocity function of area. Before, we didn't update it elevation area. The meaning is we using same area, then trap efficiency, uh, mass, trap efficiency value is exactly the same through the whole simulation time. But now we need to update it, okay? To do that, we using this reservoir reduction factor, okay? Based on deposit, we updated elevation storage curve, and then we updated elevation area curve. Using that, we can compute critical velocity based on updated area, and then up the, uh, we calculate again chance trap efficiency, and then we can generate it silt volume and uh, circulate it like that, okay? Then we can get the, some more accurate sediment deposition amount with that uh, feature, okay? For clay and silt, we have an option, just one option, because it's gonna be deposit based on the V shape, meaning is deposit at the bottom, from the bottom. But sand and gravel, you can choose the V shape, that means it's sand and gravel deposit at the bottom. But if you choose the some um, tapered shape, then it's gonna be sand and gravel deposit from the upstream. Okay. Uh, then you can simulate the better shape for elevation area and storage curve with this option. For example, this solid green color is the original elevation storage curve. But if you choose V shape, then it's a deposit from the bottom. The mean is your reservoir capacity reduced from the bottom. If we choose the top of the option, it's gonna be deposit from the solid yellow line is a deposit from the upstream, not the bottom. Okay, that's the simple concept for this process. Uh, this one is a uh, reservoir elevation, uh, uh, el uh, a reservoir reduction factor feature. So if you go to a, a reservoir tab, you need to put the, some elevation storage curve elevation area. If you have a, struct a structure like uh, some outlet or spillway, and then you go to spillway tab and they put the, the uh, debris basin spillway height and the length and coefficient. And then put the, some, this elevation area, elevation storage curve in here, then HCHMS generated area through the time changing area, and then storage changing, storage changing this red line. The blue line is pool elevation, okay? With that, you can see uh, this number, as I mean, is a disk graph. I show I show you the uh, from the demo. Uh, that's the initial elevation area curve, and then through the time you can we can generate it updated elevation area elevation storage curve. With this, you can see in the future kind of a uh, timing uh, for your detention basin or reservoir saltation, you know, up to a certain level. Okay, so that's the good information for reservoir operator or detention basin uh, debris basin operator. Okay. Okay, this is reference. I kind of put some good reference in here, so you can uh, you know use to this one later. Okay, this one is my last slide. The question and feedback time. Before that, my information, my email here, 
And then um, our program manager, Dr. Ian Freud, uh, uh, email here. And then also our wildfire program email here. If you have some question or some idea and feedback, just let us know uh, through the desk information. Okay. Last one, I want to uh, say thank you, uh, you know, to the, uh, you know, our program because all debris yield flow analysis feature in HMS is funded by USAC Arid Region Work Unit within the Flood and Coastal System Research and Development Program. Okay. I I want to say thank you again uh, through the, this opportunity.